Good evening, folks, and welcome back to our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. To my left, and for your viewing pleasure, we're welcoming Sharon Ray North back to the program for the first time with cameras, with an evening of standards, some, some great songbook stuff, but mostly just the smooth, soulful voice you bring to every performance. Thank you so much. Sharon, thank you. I'll, I'll turn it over to you. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the Ritz. Different types wear a day coat, pants with stripes and cutaway coat, perfect fit. Putting on the Ritz. Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying hard to be like Gary Cooper. Super duper, come let's mix with Rockefellers, walk with sticks or umbrellas in their midst. Putting on the Ritz. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the Ritz. Different types wear a day coat, pants with stripes and cut away coat, perfect fits. Putting on the Ritz. Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying hard to be like Gary Cooper. Super duper, come let's mix with Rockefellers, walk with sticks or umbrellas in their midst. Putting on the Ritz, putting on the Ritz, putting on the Ritz, putting on the Ritz. Wow, it is so good to be back on a stage after all of this time. You know, it's been, wow. My, my last show was here, December. And to, to be back out here after pretty much the world shut down for a while, it's a, it's a different type of feeling. You know, you're grateful, you're excited. You're nervous, you're cautious, you're, you're all of that. But it's great to be up here with the phenomenal Weldon Hill on piano. He's laughing. <laughs> and the equally phenomenal Mike Hawkins on acoustic bass. And my newfound friend, Kofi Shepsu on drums this evening. Reputation, I've heard so much about you. And I understand why now, just from one song. So we're going to keep this moving. We got a lot of good material that we want to try to get through. Um, but you know what they say, you know, it's like, hey, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing, right? <laughs> Mean a thing. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. 
do up 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 it don't mean a thing all you gotta do is swing do up 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 it makes no difference if it's sweet or hot give it all the rhythm that you've got it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing do up 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 Nothing thing if it ain't got that swing. Do up, 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 do up. It don't mean a thing. All you've got to do is swing. Do up, 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 do up. It makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Give it all the rhythm that you've got. Do up, 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 Never miss your water till your well runs dry, right? <laughs> I've missed it. This next song we're going to do, you hear it a lot on the TV commercial, and um, that's kind of what made me want to start doing it because it's such a beautiful song, but it's kind of fun at the same time. So... Um, if you're out there watching and you got your loved one with you, get up and dance. <laughs> There may be trouble ahead But while there's moonlight and music and love and romance 
let's face the music and dance before the fiddlers have fled before they ask us to pay the bill and while we still have a chance let's face the music and dance different tune and then there may be teardrops to shed but while there's moonlight and music and love and romance let's face the music and dance Before the fiddlers have fled Before they ask us to pay the bill And while we still have a chance Let's face the music and dance Soon we'll be without the moon Humming a different tune And then there may be teardrops to shed But while there's moonlight and music and love and romance Let's face the music and It's my mom <laughs> who's out here this, this evening for the, the taping. Thanks, mom. <laughs> now, this, this next song we're going to do, I, I heard it when I was a very little girl listening to my mom's Nancy Wilson albums. It is a Cole Porter tune, but... No one sings it like Nancy Wilson did. I mean, I, I can only try to do it justice. Let's see. Is it? 
Is it for all time or simply a lark? Is it Granada I see? Another song that I first heard Nancy Wilson sing, and a lot of people have done this one too, but there's a recurring theme in my life with Nancy Wilson. <laughs> she was one of my mom's absolute favorites, and mom had so many of her albums, and I was a little tiny girl, little girl, and I'd be sitting next to my parents' stereo on the floor with my ear next to the speaker, listening to Nancy Wilson. And my sister and I, we, we listened to kids' records too, Mary Poppins and stuff, but there was something about that, that Nancy Wilson voice and sound that, that just captivated me when I was little. And I can put on Nancy Wilson today and it does the same thing. Something so unique, so, so classy, so resonant, so, I mean, just everything. She was everything that you could ever want to be in a singer. I aspire to that. <laughs> Miss Otis regrets 
She's unable to lunch today. When the mob came and got her and dragged her from the jail, Madam, they hung her upon the old willow across the bay. And the moment before she died, she lifted up her lovely head and cried, Madam, Miss Otis regrets she's unable to lunch today. Sharon Ray North, unable to lunch today. <laughs> you know, you want to sing to you. You, you know, sing to I'll me. always, every time I see you, and you know Nancy Wilson, somebody special to me. So I appreciate you giving me those memories here tonight. Um, speaking of memories, would you mind joining me for a little chat? Okay, right let's over do here. it. Sharon Ray North, hey. thank you so much. Take two. We had you here some time ago but not a camera in the room. And not I'm so camera. delighted that this time, tonight, the smile comes through. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was December. December, December yeah. yeah. I think we aired you January 4th, something like that, but we, December 3rd, you and I sat here on the stage mm -hmm. and got to know each other yes. uh, and got to hear your voice. I think we talked then some about uh, your past, your love for music, where it comes from and how it develops today as you're still a performing artist, how are you picking your sets uh, and what is it like coming at the tail end of a pandemic to get back on the scene? Wow, um, let's start with the pandemic part. I think last year before COVID shut everyone down, I, I got in like maybe two, two shows. Mm. Um, the whole year, I think I only did like three or four. The last one was the one here. And we are now into June. Yeah. And I, I think this is my first show this year. <laughs> I, I think it is. I, I could be wrong, but I think this is the first one. Um, I'm fortunate, you know, I still work, you know, so I, I didn't miss one paycheck mm -hmm. during the pandemic. It's a blessing. It is a, a blessing because I know a lot of musicians and friends and who they really struggled. It was difficult for them to make ends meet. So I'm so glad for them, even more for me, that things are opening back up and people are out doing shows. Uh, we still have to exercise caution, yeah. you know, because there's still a lot of things, I think, that are still a little unknown right. about um, coronavirus. So. I'm hoping that everyone stays safe and healthy. Um, I lost some musician friends during this pandemic. Me too. Yes, you know, several died of COVID. So um, I just want everybody to be safe and be cautious and be, be healthy while they're doing their thing out there. It's um, silver linings are things I look for. Yes. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll lose my mind, but the silver lining to me is that it, it brings us here. I mean, it's for that reason, that reason of being cautious, of being prepared, that we do still get to come together yes. on this stage with lights, mm -hmm. with microphones, with cameras. Mm -hmm. um, so welcome back, welcome back to the stage and welcome back to performing tonight, Songbook. Tell me about what we're, what we're hearing you sing on the show tonight. Um, we're gonna do a bunch of standards you know, songs that I grew up listening to and that I love, like Miss Otis Regrets oh. and stuff like that. So um, I have two of 
um, Richmond's most talented musicians with me here this evening. You have. Yeah, actually three, but the other two I actually have known for a while. And um, that's uh, Mike Hawkins and Weldon Hill. And on drums, we have Kofi Shepsu, who um, I'm meeting him tonight for the first time. His reputation precedes him, though, mm -hmm. because I've heard wonderful things about him for a while, several years. But And tonight, I actually get to work with him, and I'm excited about that. You and I just learned about his the relation he has with some other very talented young musicians yes. that had no idea who summed it on this show. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly didn't. Now, we know Weldon very well, and we know Mike very well. Um, on this program, and thank you for introducing us to a new one. Mm -hmm. uh, Tin Pan, one of your stops. Yes. I'd love to learn, how did you get involved with this space? And it's quite different from the Jazz Cafe as it used to be, and it's certainly different from what we're doing here tonight. Right. How does that difference impact the way you perform? Um, it just depends on the musicians I'm working with and the vibe that I want to go with when I'm putting together a show. Um, for, for this one, doing a lot of standards, I absolutely love hearing Mike and Weldon do standards and stuff, They're just, just beautiful. Um, Tin Pan's gonna be a little bit different. Um, there are gonna be a lot of original songs from my projects in that show, and that leans a little more toward um, the smooth jazz, adult contemporary. It's just a different type of a, a vibe. Right. Um, a lot of times on those shows, though, because I love standards so much, I'll, I'll throw in a few here and there. But for this Tin Pan show, I don't have any standards in it. I just finished the set list last night. The show is um, July 25th, which is a Sunday. And I've, it's been angst for the last maybe month, month and a half, figuring out what to put in this set list. And I decided to do a lot of originals in it. And I have a new project that's gonna come out in January. It was gonna come out this month, but I had so much going on that I'm like, okay, I gotta put the brakes on that for a minute. Um, so now that things are opening back up and things are starting to calm down a little for me, um, we're going to release it in January. We have some of it done already, so I've actually put two songs in there. Um, I'm just gonna try them out on the audience. One is called Wild and Free, and the other is called Fallen in Love. And they, um, one, I wrote the melody and the lyrics, and it was arranged by my producer, um, Chris Big Dog Davis. And the other, he wrote the music and the melody, and I wrote the lyrics. And we're gonna try that, I'm gonna try that out on July 25th. I'll be going to LA um, probably within the next two or three months. Um, guitar player, producer, Grammy winner, Paul Brown is producing um, a cover song for me. I'm not gonna say which one yet, <laughs> but I will say um, Boss Gags. <laughs> so he's gonna produce that for me and I can't wait to hear what Tall Paul does with that. So this is gonna be a great project. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Talk to me about, uh, I struggle with the studio. Not that I don't love it, it's just I'm not good at it. Talk to me about your experience being in a recording studio, working on a project like you're just describing, and being on a stage like this one. Huh? Are they similar to you or different? I struggle in the studio. Oh, I'm <laughs> glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> I really do. I am totally comfortable on stage, but the studio intimidates me me too it does you know because it's like you're you're cutting for keeps mm -hmm. you know it's like that's going to be there forever mm -hmm. you know with any little crack in my voice that we didn't do over you know and i want to do a song over like 50 million times oh. you know just listening to the two songs that i'm going to be doing at Timpan. I have those, they're finished, but I'm like, maybe I should do that again. You know, on stage, it's like, if my voice cracks, if I make a mistake, but okay, okay. it's live, it Happen happens, now, yeah. you know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I struggle in the studio. I think it's the same thing for me. I'm, I'm nervous about what I'm doing, am I doing it right? And the performance, like you said, if I mess it up, it's over now, my, my, my joy 
as a performer is really the rehearsal, I think, for that reason. Because mm -hmm. uh, you get to do it again, you know? Yeah. So you're satisfied. Yeah, and then working with people like, like Big Dog and Paul Brown, you know, that's amazing. the upper echelon. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, and then there's little old me there, and it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I wouldn't say little old anything. <laughs> Put your own stuff down. You belong in the room. I belong in the room. You absolutely. I'm, I'm learning how to. Somebody in this room tonight, um, a while ago, I don't think, I don't know if they remember, gave me a, a, the best compliment that I would never have given myself. And it boiled down to being a hard worker. And I think about that when I feel like I don't belong in the room because I worked hard to yeah. get in the room. Yeah. And I know you did too. Quite an impressive career, even stops along the way at places like CNN. Yeah, um, with my all journalism. Of that, mm -hmm. With all of that under your belt, how does this love for music, for song, for performance stay so lit? Because singing is not something that I do. A singer is what I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I was born a singer. Um, God makes everybody something. Amen. No one is left out. He puts in you what you were meant to be. It's what he saw me as being. You know, and if, if God saw that and put it in me before I ever even materialized on September 25th, mm -hmm. then it's up to me to to make it happen, to nurture it, to harvest it, mm. you know, and mm. to, to do as much as I can with it because he could have just as easily given it to somebody else, you know, or given it to somebody who would use it if I wasn't going to. That, so. That's powerful. Um, I, I, I love that because it's, it's my heart too. I'm a singer. I've got this microphone and I ask people questions now, but Boy, do I, I love the feeling of getting a song out. I've heard you. Oh, boy. <laughs> Maybe you'll hear me again. The world ended some not too long ago, and it's just now coming back, and it certainly impacts the way that I grapple with and, and, and receive art and music. And in that same way, when I begin performing again, I know it's going to impact my, the choices I make. Mm -hmm. Have you felt a changing in yourself as an artist in that way? From the pandemic, maybe a little bit. Um, I think my, my desire to get out there more mm. is a little greater because sometimes you, you can kind of take it for granted. The gig is going to be there. The, the club is going to be there. The festival is going to be there. But then they weren't there. No. You know, so I think from, from that vantage point, but I think what is more different about me is as I get older and noticing the changes, mm. you know, in my, in my style and in my delivery and in my vocal tones and things, um, they're different. And some of them I absolutely love. Some of them was like, okay, I like that better when I was 20. <laughs> you know? That note came out easier when I was 20. You know? you have a little bit of hold you know? on Yeah, so, so it changes. I, I remember one time I heard the late Joan Rivers say, she was talking to somebody and she's like, oh, the voice changes. And I'm thinking, what is she talking about? The voice doesn't change. The voice changes. Mm -hmm. It does, but I was a lot younger when I heard her say that and I didn't realize it. And there were very few people whose voices don't change. You know, like Gladys Knight is one of those people yeah. whose voice sounds, I mean, she's probably 98, 99% at what she was 40 years ago. I can agree to that. I mean, she's almost right there, but then there are other people whose voices have aged and, and they, they don't hit those notes the way they used to, they, you know, and, but I mean, I, I didn't have gray hair before, now I do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it, it happens, you know, so. 
Uh, my grays are coming in too. But I'm gonna <laughs> let them. I'm gonna wear them proudly. Uh, yeah, um, I love them. <laughs> thank you for that that answer. It, it um, reminded me that I'm still coming out of youth and evolving, mm -hmm. and maybe once one day, one day I won't be quite so impacted by outside things. And like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, have the grounding within to just adjust a little bit. Look for more opportunities, but that, that was powerful to me, what you said about festivals just weren't going to be there. For me, it was church choir rehearsal. It's just not there. Mm -hmm. I, for the first time ever, didn't give a Christmas concert mm -hmm. and just wasn't there. Um, and I'm looking forward to that again. Yeah. And opportunities like these, um, I, I hope, help our artists to get back to it. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for the conversation. We've got a second half of this show to get to. Do you mind giving us a little more music? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you don't. <laughs> yeah, okay. Otherwise, I'd have to. So, Sharon Ray North, thank you so much. Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe continues right now. If you like to travel, this song is for you. <laughs> Must take the A train to go to Sugar Hill way up in Harlem. If you if you miss the A train, you find you miss the quickest way to Harlem. Hurry, get on now, it's coming. Listen to those rails up thrumming on board. Get on the A train Soon You will be on Sugar Hill in Harlem If you'll miss the A train, you'll 
Mine is the good way to Harlem Still traveling. We're leaving Harlem now, though. We're going cross country. You ready? plan to motor west travel my way take the highway that's the best get your kicks on route 66 well it winds from Chicago to LA more than two
years ago, I had, well actually, this next song, I first sang it when I was living in Atlanta, and someone booked us in Alabama to perform this song, and I had never heard it, but I was like, wow, and fast forward to about two years ago, and Weldon, Mike, and I, we, we did it. In, uh, in our Aretha Franklin tribute show. And um, we're gonna do that one now. We were gonna travel a little bit more, but I'm tired now. <laughs> Cause we were going far on that next one, man. We were leaving the country on that next song. So I figured we might as well just stay right here in these United States of America and do some more reading. Crazy calls me, 
It's almost time to leave, y'all. I hate to have to do it, but I gotta do it. <laughs> this next song, I wrote the lyrics, and the very, 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 very special person in my life, in my heart, wrote the music. And there's a little backstory behind that because I heard the music when he was working on it, and I said, Oh, what is that? Oh, I like that. And he said, well, that's just for a project that I'm working on, you know, just a little instrumental, because he's a guitar player. And I said, no, nah, I want that. He said, nah, it's mine. I'm like, no. I hear the lyrics. I will write them. This went on for a while. I won. And in 2007, I put out my first real studio, my first real studio project called The Way You Make Me Feel. And this is the title cut.
walking hand in hand Watching sunrise and sunset Dinner by candlelight And we'll cuddle up all through the night Making love we won't forget put the clap of three or four people in here there. <laughs> oh, Sharon Ray, no it deserves every sound we can make. And finally a camera so you can see where a sound like this comes from. Sharon, fellas, what a night. And boy, was it, was it a travel, a journey getting to this night. Well, oh, <laughs> yes, we completely. sure didn't make it. Testify, testify. <laughs> boy, but we, we did it. And I'm thankful to you for it. So thank you. Thank you for having us here. Yes, ma'am. And B.J. Brown, Richmond Jazz Society, thank you for sending musicians faithfully week after week. To Dominion Energy, thank you for giving us the funds to keep this going. You can't see them. But D.J. J. Dion and friends, Tisha. And Michael up there in the booth, thank you for being with us tonight to capture this for our audience here. To those of you at home, who've just been through another hour of epic music right here from Richmond, Virginia. Thank you for loving with us. Thank you for listening to us and thank you for learning from us. In Richmond, Virginia, from the Leslie Cheek Theater at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, this has been our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. I have always been Robert Fennard. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, we'll do a photo. Wow. Let me put this down.